All right, well, we have the first arabesque by Debussy, and I'm just going to talk about some things that you can do to play it better. So, if you look at my position right now, finger four, and then I have to do this shift in the right hand right away to make it possible to go down this next harmony. Nice harmony in the beginning, right? And then... Right? So, this is me looking at the editor's fingerings. I think a much better solution is to use finger 3 and actually stick my left hand pretty far inside the keys because then it's much easier to find the next position, the next uh, harmony in the left hand at least and uh, shift the hand to the thumb playing on the black keys, right? So that's one of the tricky spots. That's the reason we want to push the left hand inside so that the thumb is already next to the G sharp as opposed to like this. Right? There's a lot of zigzag motion if you don't prepare right away inside the keys. But I also think that in the right hand, if you use fingers 1, 3, 4, 5, it allows you to much easier find the next harmony. This way only the thumb has to move down from C sharp down to B. Right, so just adjusting a couple of fingers like that and pushing the at least the left hand deep inside the keys right from the outset I think really helps to solve this particular measure. Naturally, for the second measure, we end up with finger 5 on A. And unfortunately, there is not much we can do but shift the entire right hand to its new position. But I also think that the fact that in the first measure we had a certain pattern in the right hand and it worked, we can apply it to the second measure and really have that same one, three, four, five, and then coming down to five, two, one like this. So let's block them out. Right, so then at the very end of measure two in the left hand, I think this position is just fine. One, two, four, because it nicely prepares finger uh, five here, but actually if you think about it, I'm, I'm going to start um, editing a couple of things. If you think about it, we have to keep going down to that E that I just um, highlighted here. And so for that reason, why not actually go to, whoops, uh, third finger here. Hold on, sorry, there, third finger right here and fourth finger here, and that way we can prepare even more fingers ahead of time. left hand. So uh, let's let's try to look at this again. All right, so if you can block out this way the first two measures you can very easily play it. You might notice that at the very end my preparation of position isn't so good. Instead of this should really be doing that. Right? So in fact, stretching out to cover the full octave in my left hand. Okay, one more time. I'm actually going to put those fingers down just so it's easy to see what I'm talking about. Three here, then the rest is fine, and also a three right there. notice me do every time I go to the new harmony there's a very very clear shift in the left hand yeah so let's add a five there as well there is no questions all right so press stopping right on that moment 
right here. I am actually actively practicing the position shift. Mm -hmm. Not just the left hand, there's also a slight adjustment in the thumb. But that's an important thing to do if you want to avoid any hesitancy as you are playing through this passage. And same thing there when we get to, let's say, this, this cyan highlight, my right hand has to shift. Right? There is a very clear transition like this. And then, of course, let's do an orange. Oops, come back orange highlight and again better to spread the hand in the left hand spread the fingers out a bit then both hands had to do this jump okay let's say it's blue highlight really getting colorful here so here blue well kind of indigo i guess more more than blue So that indigo moment looks like this. The right hand covers the octave. The left hand, just a little sixth, E to C sharp. And that puts me into position to play that entire left hand measure, no problem. And of course, I'm in position to play the entire uh, right hand as well. So that's nice. bringing out those melodic sounds. Now here, even though that yellow highlighted note is notated as a half note, we need to, of course, remember that this is pedaled and the sound of the note is separate from what my finger is doing. So I'm only going to hold it, maybe, and get rid of a bunch of those highlights, actually. <laughs> Getting to be a little too colorful. Okay, so I'm only going to hold this yellow highlighted note to make me right around here, making sure it's caught by the pedal. And then just shift. Make sure that my five comes out and actually covers the D sharp. So it's not left to, to chance, but okay, let's do more highlights. At cyan, I wanna stop and check this. That move of the fifth finger needs to happen, or else trouble. Okay, so we've got a lot to really worry about. Right, you can see all these snappy moves that I'm having to do. But we don't want to worry about them, because if we're worried, we can't play. So we need to master them so they become automated. I prefer to work backwards because for me, if let's say I want to stop right here at measure three, I'm going to say, okay, if as long as I'm in this position at that thin indigo or whatever color line, I'll be fine. I can play measure three, no problem, but I need to be in that position. So my solution is, okay, before that thin line, I'm going to have that position, left hand, and I might still be stuck in this position in the right hand, right? So I'm going to start here, I'm going to hold down that third finger G sharp, just before the thin line, and I'm going to do this practice, right? I can, I can even play the F sharp, I can even play that F sharp on the thin blue line. But what, what's more important is that position shift. That's the least natural thing about playing the piano. We're preparing things not because that makes a sound, it's so that later when we are making sounds we're in the, in, in the, the appropriate place to do so. So, right, so that's an important move. Fourth finger is already in place when I'm holding that three down. Right? Fourth finger is going to play its note no problem, but I better make sure one and two move over here. right hand moves to that position. One more time. Right? That's a feeling. That's a feeling in your body, in your hands, in your arms. 
that snap. If you don't make it conscious, it's never really going to settle down and be part of your performance. So always make all these interesting position shifts as conscious as possible um, in your practice and actually practice them. Right. That's an important move, so I don't want to bypass it. Of course, if we keep stepping backwards, let's say now what I'm going to call that second finger on B right before that red colored three, well, same thing. I've already done basically just, I just did what I'm practicing. I just added one note. So that's the reason for stepping backwards is I've already done the hard bit. Now I'm just adding on to the front part just to extend my practice segment a bit more. Right, and then eventually I'm holding that one third note before, <laughs> before the thin blue line, right? But always stopping to check that I'm mastering that position jump. And of course you can continue going backwards. Eventually you can do the whole thing. Making sure I'm starting in the right position. Always stopping to check that transition. And then you might probably want to practice the same way. Stopping, let's make it a thin uh, green line, right? Same thing, we have to be in this position here on that green line okay but coming into it will be probably right around here right if you look before the green line i was playing this kind of harmony so holding that d sharp right before the the green line and i'm kind of still stuck in that old position okay fine boom right so then you can keep working backwards, C sharp there, finger three, always stopping to check that position snap. All right, eventually one, always stopping, always checking. All right, eventually left hand joins in, always stopping with that feeling of the new position. Okay, so now I've kind of combined two beats of that, or those two beats before the uh, green line. So stepping backwards, making sure to master position shifts really is the key to successful smooth uh, learning of any piece, including this one. All right, so. I don't feel like I'm really extending that th th uh, fifth finger all the way to E. It might be stuck on F, but that's okay. More importantly that I have fourth on the F sharp. And then as I go into the new position, the fifth will naturally land on that E uh, below. So no problems. And again, as we discussed, a little position adjustment right at the end of the yellow highlighted E, right? Um, you're not, you're not going to really hold it past that C sharp, right? Do C sharp and then move. Right, so keep extending that fifth finger down way ahead of time. You don't want to do this. Oh. If you do that kind of o oh, o oh, o oh moment, that that's just a perfect indication that you weren't preparing ahead of time. So maybe even on have a decision on that uh, cyan thick highlight. I'm going to move my fifth finger from E to D sharp and check. Stop and check. Right, stopping is the most important thing in practice. Deciding when you're going to stop and what you're going to check. Let's just keep moving there because I think I've already, mm, yep, exceeded my space. All right, so here, let's use a thick yellow highlight. Sure, why not? Um, let's get rid of some extra material. So we 
don't get confused. All right, so what are we doing? We are looking at that yellow highlight. I don't want to go past it until I feel that extension, right? It's re really tempting to just keep going. All right, and you can see my pedal come down, of course. Because if I've done that fifth finger extension, by the way, look at how I'm doing it. I'm not doing it like this. It's a very common problem that a lot of people who um, transition from like a more small hand position piece, like, you know, something more from the classical era where you don't have to stretch out your hands quite as much into pieces of this nature, so the late 19th century especially, you really have to get used to that idea of playing the fifth finger at this crazy angle. Right? It's like 10 o'clock or something. And what you're really aligning with is either the, the thumb, and then you're really, really playing this fifth finger at this crazy angle, or at the very least, some sort of line that's between the second and the, and the thumb. Uh, so that, that's kind of a common thing that happens. That's important right here. Right. Keep pressing with this base of my thumb some white keys. And again, no, notice what's happening here. I'm barely reaching the C sharp with the fifth. Of course, I'm anchored on the A with the second finger. My thumb isn't really able to reach that E comfortably, but that's okay. As long as it's extending for far as far as it can go naturally, I'm fine. A smaller hand, you might need to rotate more, so you'll have even more space between the thumb and the E. That's fine. But what's important is it's basically shaped in, like this harmony. So this harmony on beats three and four of this current measure with the yellow highlight. So first checkpoint. So as you're playing the A, let's highlighted with something small. Uh, let's do a small yellow highlight. <laughs> so that small yellow highlight says, I'm going to extend my thumb to E right there. Now here, that F sharp is a tricky finger in the right hand. Um, different people do it differently. You, you can definitely just stay with this program, play it with finger five. And then during that beat, maybe around that thin yellow hi uh, highlight, shift it into the new position, absolutely fine. Or another possibility is already shift with finger four to reach it here. But that would be bad because you know what, bad idea. Because you will be changing the pedal. And if you don't hold the A in the right hand into that third beat, you're going to drop it. So yeah seems like a possible solution but because of that tied a natural we can't do it so we have to do this and just shift yeah so really i'm treating that f sharp as a kind of staccato shift now put a little red squiggle like that so coming up on the red squiggle and i'm i'm already here supposed to be I wasn't. Tut tut tut, or tsk tsk tsk, or whatever the right uh, admonishment sound is. Right, yellow, thick yellow highlight. Now coming up on the red. Right, and that's when I jump. So what's the problem right here? Of course, I'm nowhere near where I need to be in the left hand. So another little highlight. Let's do a yellow, uh, no. This one. It's a little indicator that I have to jump from that E note. Like that. And where am I jumping? I'm jumping to these three notes right here. Right. So all of this to say that at every point you're going to have to make some decisions about how you're using the fingerings that you've chosen. They will imply 
when the jump has to happen. And if you don't practice the jump, you'll have trouble to maintain the fluidity. So let's do first four measures one more time as a summary. Um, have to, to stop and shift right like this because, well, hopefully it's still visible. Okay, so the first four measures, here we go. Now look look at look at this second finger. Where is it supposed to be? Hello? Okay, one more time. And then my left hand already extending to the fourth finger on B to the fifth finger on A. second finger do it's right here on the B and why is this the fourth here it's because I didn't put that finger down or actually I did and then I deleted it didn't I because of my video uh, edits okay one more time stop check That second finger, I really don't like, it's kind of halfway between B and C, B and C. Come on, right on B. There it is. And I don't like that fourth finger. Come on, you can do better. Put, it, put, put yourself on F sharp. I like the fact that in this measure three and four, I can stay in one position in the right hand for quite a, a while. Oh. Okay, so you can see I took a much slower tempo to make sure I'm doing everything right and I was still screwing up. There's just too much going on. That's why I really believe in only taking one battle at a time. And so let's say make sure that first stopping point where you're changing position is actually happening don't go beyond and as i said i think the best way to actually practice that fluidity is by doing it backwards like i showed in the beginning of this video uh, then right, just stop and check then my next point would be the downbeat of the next measure right, and see i did not land it at all what, what is this third finger kind of on C sharp but second finger also on C sharp what is this uh, very stupid so I'm going to practice it until I can do it right that was better okay get it okay that green thin green uh, line okay what is this fourth finger doing here that's better but fourth could still be on F sharp that's that's good now that's a good position shift right that thin whatever indigo line blue line whatever okay and f sharp yeah I, I could i could do better because i want to have that highlighted e better prepared all right here it is i'm about to do the thin indigo line no there I'm going to actually play the F sharp on the downbeat. Right, that's, that's better. So really have to practice it until it becomes part of me. Now, the first pass through any piece is always touch and go, right? You're figuring things out, you're changing fingers, you know, you're trying to learn all these moves. It's just not sinking in. Let your mind sleep on it. Let yourself do the work. Move, move on, do something else, do another passage, do something completely different. Come back to it the following day. Now you'll find that recovering all of this hard work is actually so much easier. So the second day might feel more like, okay, first practice, you're actually in position. That might be too much. When you are coming back to something the following day, still rebuild it from the ground up. Because trying to just play it might result in all kinds of accidents as you just heard. 
but uh, building it from ground up, figuring out each position shift on its own first, checking that you still kind of have that work retained in your mind is a very good way to then say, okay, it's coming a lot easier. Now let's maybe try to play it a longer passage than uh, before. But yeah, so those four measures, well, it's really five measures of introduction into the main lilt of this piece. You know, and I can't play it yet, so um, we'll get to it later. But just looking at that fifth measure real quick, let's zoom back in. So here it's very important to realize that the, the slur does not mean that you have to somehow you know do some kind of finger legato or slurring now of course it's with the pedal so the real uh, way to play it will be like this and i'll use my preference for position shift indication So what it's showing is that after the first position, you know, I'm not even going to look at the right hand, it's all about the left here. You want to instantly jump, boom, right? That's the first box. And the box is showing roughly the uh, amount of keyboard space I have to prepare. So C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, A, yeah? And then at that A, you see a little um, box right here that box means just jump to these two notes well maybe even three because i think it's a good idea to play play this note with four and this note with one so that means prepare for three three so you're here on that a you're about to do the yellow highlighted box just do that what you'll notice i'm keeping my thumb tucked underneath and that will allow me to much easier find that A and then do the jump. So that's the way to practice. Find this position, first box, find next position with the thumb tucked under and then the final note, you sh just by tucking the thumb further under you should be able to land on it and then do this. I can barely see it. And then from A, I guess it's a really huge position shift. Whoops, wrong stamp, so even bigger. So you're trying to prepare this. And then you're ready to go into a tempo, and we'll talk about it next time.